Des Moines, and all of Central Iowa, welcome to Max World Live. Max World is your world. Every day we talk about the issues and topics that matter most to you. And as always, it's your voice we want to hear in Max World. So join the conversation by calling 515-244-0077. And now, here's the host of Max World Live, J. Michael McCoy. Good afternoon, six minutes after four o'clock on the fourth day of April in the Lord's Year 2016. J. Michael McCoy, glad to have you on board on this Monday. We have a, a great week planned for you. Lots of guests, lots of interesting conversation. Uh, we're also going to talk a little bit about retirement tomorrow with uh, Weiss and Markle. Uh, they are a firm here in town that... Um, well, I want to tell you about them. They're, they're very good at what they do. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm pretty good with the, the green dollars. I know how to make them, but I don't know how to save them. I don't spend friv- friv- I don't spend like crazy. Uh, in fact, my kids would tell you that I'm cheap. But I take my money and I invest them into businesses. That's what I do. Well, I figured out that I was heading for a bad road to retirement. Because I just simply hadn't put enough away. I didn't think about it. So these guys kind of got me straightened out. And so I've asked them to come on the radio and uh, share with you a little bit about some of the pitfalls that I did and some people do. Maybe you've done. And how we can get that figured out. Because I'm, I'm 50. What, what will I be? I was born in 59. So I'll be 57 this year. And man, that's old. Now, somebody who's listening just laughed at me because they're like Jill King old. I mean, they're really old. Yeah, you're just a kid, Mac. I know. I'm just a kid. But um, when, you haven't, when you haven't figured out a whole bunch about retirement, and now people are living so long because you're like the bionic man, you can replace hips and knees and shoulders and arms and wish they'd figure out how to replace a brain. I'd like to do a brain transplant. I'd like to find somebody really smart, and then I'd be good-looking and smart rather than just good-looking. I've seen some outer limits. I'm kidding. I'm, I'm you know kidding. I'm I have a face for radio. What? Go ahead. Yeah, outer limits has you know they do that brain transplants. They've had that outer limits. Oh sure, the old science sci-fi movie. Oh oh the oh, shows. Oh yeah, uh, Twilight Zone. Yeah, and then there's Young Frankenstein. You know. Yeah. The Abby Normal brain that they yeah. found. Yeah. You sure. could. Hey, Bob, you could do that for me though, couldn't you? You would know how to do that. Take a brain out and put it back in. I, I'm I'm impressed that you trust me to be able to do that on you. <laughs> well, start on Chris and just see how it works out. Let Let's take Chris's brain. <laughs> let's take Frank's brain and put it in Chris. So then Chris would talk like a hillbilly from Missouri, Missouri, Missouri. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can, can you do that? Uh, no. Can we try? Well, we could say we could say we could be like Hillary Clinton and not admit that they're people and that they could we could we could just test them. We could we could practice. No, no. Research. Research. We'll call it research. No. Okay. No. All right. Uh, I'm just trying to be funny here because I'm going to get into a subject that really makes me mad. And uh, it's your voice I'm going to want to hear on this. Cha- would you change my mind today? I would love it if my listeners could change my mind. I would love it if, my, if I could walk out of here in 50 minutes and I go home and I go pick up my wife from work because she can't drive right now because of the accident. So I'll pick her up at work and she'll always ask. She's such a good lady. She always asks her, how was your show today? She always asks that. And I'd like to say, you know what, honey? I had these great listeners call up, and they changed my mind today. I had my, I had my eyes looking through rose-colored glasses, actually to be the opposite of rose-colored glasses, feces-colored glasses, and I just saw the world horrible. I saw the news media horrible. And my listeners called up and said, Mac, I think I can change your mind. I don't think that's the way it is. So 515-244-0077. Now, if for, fun, for some reason... You agree with me. I, I need to hear that, too. I, I do. I need, I, one way or another, I'm going to go, and my wife's going to say, how was the show today? And I'm going to say, either my listeners changed my mind, and they are awesome, or, well, honey, I, I hate to tell you this, but I was right. I was right. 
And she'll say, write that down, date it, timestamp it, because it doesn't happen very often. <laughs> so I get up this morning and I open the Des Moines Register. I'm, I'm a paper boy. Uh, years ago at the Beatrice, we called it Beatrice, but Beatrice Daily Sun, I had Route 51, 70 some homes I serviced. I did it for years until I turned 16 and then I didn't want to do it anymore because you just can't throw papers very well out of a Mustang. So I, uh, the newspaper has been a part of my life. I've written uh, op-eds for newspapers. I've, and see, to me, the newspaper is the paper that we depend on. And I know that's what the Des Moines Register calls itself. But I, I, let, let's talk about that literally. I depend, on the, I depend to open up the newspaper in the morning and read the facts, ma'am, just like Dragnet. Just the facts, ma'am. Now, I know there's going to be an op-ed by Ray Cabasu that are going to make my eyes shoot blood onto the wall, but I, that's an op-ed. But when I open the front page and it tells me what the news of the day is, I expect it to be fact. One of the big crying stories that the Register has right now is about Benjamin Carl Brown. After being in a liquor store, stealing two bottles of liquor... He stuffed them into his pants and he ran out of the store. Behind him was the clerk whose face Brown had just broken. Two different places with two quick punches. Drunk and scared, Brown... Just listen to how this is written. Drunk and scared, Brown tossed aside one of the bottles and struggled to pull the other from his pants as he ran through the parking lot. Stop! Stop! You're going to jail, a voice shouted behind him. He slipped, hitting the ground hard. Instantly, someone was on top of him, telling him not to move. He was under arrest. At the police station, the 18-year-old confessed to shoplifting the fireball whiskey and punching the clerk who suffered four broken bones. I'm sorry, I said two, four broken bones in his face. Five months later, Brown was sent to the Newton Correctional Facility. He spent 690 days, a little under two years, behind bars. He's one of 320 Iowa inmates serving time for second-degree robbery, which carries a mandatory 10-year sentence with a requirement that seven years must be served before eligible for parole. Judges, regardless of a case, a case of circumstances, have no say in the sentence. Brown, a first-time offender will be eligible for parole in 2021, he'll be 25. Iowa has the heart, this is the Des Moines Register, Iowa has the harshest sentencing laws in the Midwest for robbery. About half of the 1,196 offenders serving mandatory minimum sentences in Iowa are convicted of first or second degree robbery. Now, prison is designed to put people away so they can't hurt people, right? And that, it's to protect us. I mean, I know a lot of people want to say it's punishment, but I think three squares and a cot and free medical service, it's I, not, I, not bad if you're a criminal. It's not normal life, though. And uh, Bill, uh, who called first hour, can attest to that. I mean, it's not the same. We, we take for granted a lot of our freedoms. If you've ever spent time with a, with a former inmate, uh, we take for granted some of the basic freedoms that we have. Going to the bathroom when you want, getting to eat when you want, getting to wear what you want, getting to get up when you want, go to whoa, sleep whoa, whoa, when you whoa. want. We're getting to wear what I want? Go ahead. I'm just making freedom. a joke. Freedom. Freedom. The freedom. Freedom. Yeah. I, I think we... I think we, I think we uh, we take that stuff for granted. And it is punishment, though. And we should pun people who do bad things should be punished. Right? I mean, I, I look, I'll be the first to admit, if I do something wrong, I'm not going to be happy about it. And I really appreciated Bill in the first hour calling in and saying that when he was in jail, uh, during the time he was in prison, he felt like it was, you know, it wasn't right. But he's learned. He's, un he's understood. You know, no one likes being disciplined. No one likes being punished. Um, but that's what happens. All right. So let, let's examine this case for a minute. He stole liquor yep. while being drunk yep. under the age of 21, assaulted the clerk, and broke four bones. Right. 
So he, he has no concept of following the law because he's under 21 and he's drunk. He has no concept of following the law because he stole two bottles of liquor. He has no concept of following the law because he assaulted the clerk twice and broke four bones. So why isn't prison the perfect place for somebody like that? He doesn't have any regard for the law. He's drunk underage, he steals, and he assaults people. Why isn't that the perfect place to put him? Well, here's what... Did you want to answer that? I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a rhythm thing, you know? It's just, it's just when you just, you, our pauses are the same length. You keep going. You're doing great. Here's the story right next to it in the register. That 1,190 inmates are serving time in Iowa prisons for violent crimes. 70% of them, 70% of the sentences are served before they're considered for parole. But 35% of those inmates are black. 3.4% of the population in Iowa is black. So we are picking on black people and putting them in prison more, not because they're committing crimes, because they're black. Are you ready to have this conversation with me? Change my mind. Tell me I've got it all wrong. 515-244-0077. I think the register is calling me a racist. (gasps) I want to hear your voice. 515-244-0077. Live here on Yes, It Is. It's the truth. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you. Sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coach with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hi. My name is David Burrier, your Hope Coach. I host a live weekly talk show called I've Been There every Thursday afternoon at 5.30, right here on webcast1live.com and on my weekly radio program Saturday mornings at 10 on Truth Network 99.3 FM. I interview common everyday people who have survived incredible life challenges and who testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of their storms. So join me as we bring a message of hope and encouragement. Everybody needs hope. I know, because I've been there. Hey, everybody. I brought Northern Lights pizza. And it's got Graziano sausage. Rockton Prevention is celebrating 25 years of creating a caring community. We want to say thank you to the tens of thousands of Rock High School mentors that have carried our message of health, love, and encouragement to over 1.5 million children, teachers, and parents. Our mentors teach children methods and skills to prevent bullying and drug use. Thank you to all the school administrators, teachers, and counselors for the opportunity to serve you. Rock on, fair citizens. Rock on. This is Pat McManus for Rock and Prevention, the Richard O. Jacobson Foundation, and this station. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live.
21 minutes after 4 o'clock, 421 in the afternoon, 4th day of April, Lord's Year 2016. J. Michael McCoy, I hope you had a wonderful weekend. Weird weather. I'm afraid, well, you're going to like this. We talked about this last hour. You're going to like this. We're getting into spring. We're going to have summer pretty soon. Temperatures are going to be averaging in the 70s and 80s. And uh, you'll be just happier than heck because it's back to summer in Iowa. My daughter and I went out. We did our favorite uh, spring-summer uh, sport, which is uh, disc golf, frisbee golf. We went out to go do that, actually, on Sunday. And my daughter summed it up perfectly. She said, it felt like they just skipped spring. What happened? It was, re- yeah. it was hot. It was hot Sunday, kind of in the 83 degrees. Yeah. middle of the afternoon. We, just, we went out. We thought, oh, it's such a nice day. We figured it would be a spring day, and you're out there, and the sun was just beating down. It was just hotter than we expected because 80 was hot all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah. All right, 515-244-0077. That's the number you can call to get on the radio. You can also text us at the Service Legends Truth text line at 515-809-0993. Either way, I want to hear your voice. I want you to change my mind. I want you to tell me I'm wrong. I feel like the local newspaper, the paper that Iowa depends on, is trying to make me feel guilty. That 3.4% of the population in Iowa is black, but 35% of those inmates in jail are black. So we're just putting them in jail because we're black, right? I mean, that. And the right here, here's the red. Well, we didn't exactly say that. No, you didn't. But that's what you implied. Now, maybe you think I'm a low information reader. Maybe you're going to look at me and try to shame me and say, Mac, we didn't say that. Shame on you, Mac, for thinking that's what we meant. That's not at all what we meant. That's not what we said. That's what you said. Oh, I've argued with so many liberals. I just, I know their, I know their narrative by heart. No, that's what you meant. You meant to say that we put black people in jail when they shouldn't be. Change my mind on this, would you? 515 244 0077. Let's go, Tim. Tim, are you there? This is James. I'm sorry, this is who? James. Okay, James, go ahead. Shoot. How are you? Not too bad. Um, as a Christian, I, the, Denver, the, the register is just way liberal in their point of view and the way to look at things because they want to graph things with using demographics and so forth, tried to make people feel guilty. But we also got to remember that we make a choice in our actions and what we decide to do. Whether we be drunk and stupid, or we make a good decision. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. It doesn't come down to a matter of which race is in prison because they did something. It comes down to the individual. It's the actions, not the color. Exactly. So what, what, James, do you, all right, I'm going to try not to be sarcastic here. You're fine. What do you think the writers at the register are thinking when they try to make us feel like this is because of color rather than actions? Do they, I believe that they're trying to fuel a race war. A race war. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Um, I mean, if you look at most of the Democrats, and what's been going on in the media lately, and, I mean, especially with the Black Lives Matters deal, they have made it a racial boundary line that says, because you're this color, you get more privileges than I do. Because you're this color, you don't go to jail. James, are you over the age of 50? I am 35 years old. Oh, well, I'm actually going to be 37 this month. Okay. So you studied, you remember what the 60s and early 70s, didn't we already solve this problem? Supposedly we did. (laughs) I mean, we... And and this is what they're blowing it down to, is they're bringing this back up so we can have another WAP, have another burning of a city, looting, and so forth, trying to get these people riled up, all because they have an agenda that they want to meet. All right, James, it's always your voice I want to hear. Thank you very much for listening. So, so you. You, you, I'm sorry, you didn't change my mind. You agreed with me, right? Yes, sir, I did. Okay, so that's <laughs> zero on changing mind and one on agreeing. All right, James, thanks for listening. I appreciate you. Yeah.
Not a problem. Thank you. All right. 515-244-0077. My uh, producer is terribly busy in there. I think this is going to be Frank. I think. Frank, you're live in Max World. Is this you, Frank? Hello, Frank? Who is on the line with me? Okay, we'll wait till that gets cleared up. There we go. Frank, is that you? All right, we'll get it figured out. Hey, hey, Mac, um, you read a story a little bit earlier, if I could bring us back to that, uh, about um, Benjamin Carl Brown, who uh, was arrested uh, for he had punched a clerk, stole some alcohol, and was arrested um, while he was drunk. He did all this sort of stuff. Underage. And he's underage to be drinking. Um, and he's currently serving, what did you say, 600 days for this already? Uh, he's been in jail 690 days. He will uh, not be eligible for parole until 2021, and he'll be 25 years old. And by the way, his sister died of cancer, his little sister. Yeah. They put that in the article, too, because they just they want to make us feel so bad about sending a black man to prison who was drunk, public in talks, underage, theft, and assault. Right. But we've got we've to uh, ask the question, does the punishment fit the crime? See, I agree with you that, that uh, the way this story tends to be reported and the way stories like this tend to be reported is they make these things simply race issues, and they're really not. Right. Um, people make bad choices. When they make bad choices, there are consequences for those bad choices. In this case, uh, Mr. Brown here, this young man um, who is going to serve a long time in prison for stealing some alcohol and, and punching somebody. Now, wait, hold on. Let the, are you trying to downplay the fact that he was underage? Well, drinking Public under intoxication. Wait, hold, on, hold on, hold on. Drinking underage. Uh, I don't know if that, in and of itself, is a crime. You're it not, is. You can be arrested for for drinking underage, and okay. the person who gave him the liquor can also be for delinquency to a minor. So okay. you've got delinquency to a minor, you have uh, public intoxication, you have theft right. of alcohol, and then you have assault, which caused four bones in a man's face to be broken. Right. So. Yeah, I don't know. Assault, the, the assault, the four broken bones, uh, that's a pretty big deal. Stealing the alcohol is a big deal. I don't think it's, you know, six, seven, seven years. I don't think it's seven years bad. Mm. If I stole some alcohol, I don't think going to prison for seven years is, that no, seems no, legitimate. No, no, of course not. It's hitting the man in the face and breaking four bones. I want to say the assault's probably a bigger deal. Um, but but you, I, you think it's too much. Well, it seems a little heavy, and I think that, unfortunately, the Des Moines Register posted the other article that calls uh, the state of Iowa and the criminal justice system racist. Um, that headline insinuates falseness. You know, right. it's, yeah, there to, it's there to prop it, propagate truth. Now, there is a bigger issue here, and I think the issue might be that we consider does the, does the punishment, in fact, fit the crime, and that's a whole different conversation to have. 515-244-0077. That's the phone. It's your voice I want to hear. Call in. It takes us a little bit to get to the numbers. Jeb is a new producer, so we're doing the best we can. I believe line 321 is Frank. Frank, you're live in Max World. Hello. Oh, it's you. Yeah. Um, it's the Frank. Yeah, I was just calling. I mean, I just had a simple comment, of, you know, to put to that. You know, it's just first, first of all, it's sad just to hear people even say anything like this. You know, it doesn't matter where you hear it from. It's you can't just put anything like that. It shows the ignorance of the world, how we're easily influenced by all the media. You know, people have to learn how to be individuals and stand out rather than hear what they hear and take it. And not only that, but promote it out there. Okay, Frank, I, 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 I think I agree with you. So, you know, and I mean, doing good upon anything, that's, that's upon anybody's heart, you know? I mean, I practice, I, I'm a Christian, but I also practice Buddhism. You know, I practice not the religion, but just simply as a philosophy way of life. I grew up in California, in Los Angeles, and coming from there, when I came to Iowa, it was during the time that there was a riots going on in California, the... Potential, right? The, you know, it was the Mexicans versus the black community. Mm. So, so if, if I, because I just want to understand you, correct, Frank. So you think it's wrong? Are you saying that you think it's wrong for the media to try to turn this into race baiting? 
it really is wrong because first of all, you never know anybody's situation, anybody, what could have they done, or not even that, but the evidence of what goes upon, you know, why they landed there. It could be a pattern of criminal history, you know, and easily just how that is influenced. Sometimes people are influenced as well to commit bad. You know, it doesn't mean that people have to be, to an extent, punished like that because there's there's worse crimes that people will get less time for, you know, and it's not even right. Well, Frank, you're a new caller to the show. Thanks for listening. Please feel free to call any time, all right? All right. Thank you. You bet, Frank. Thank you very much. All right. Um... I'm trying to figure Well, out. I, I appreciate what I think. Also, I think Lisa. if I... Lisa. Oh, are we going to Lisa right now? Uh, Lisa, no. Yeah. Lisa is on line two. Lisa, are you there? Yes. Hi, Lisa. Hi, how are you? I'm excellent. How are you? Fine. So what's your thoughts on this? Tell, just convince me I'm wrong. Convince me the newspaper's not race baiting. As Frank said, they're not trying to start race riots and setting us back 50 years of history. Well, I'm not one for conspiracy theories, so I don't really think they're probably starting to try to start a race riot and get, quote-unquote, these people riled up. I don't know who those people are, but maybe us. Okay. I, I, I don't know. You know, for me, I look at that, and I, I don't really think they're calling me a racist. I think, what's up with that? You know what I mean? And so I, I kind of want to, I wonder why. You okay? Now back back up. I'm trying to understand your question. For me, it's a discussion point. Yes. You know what I mean? It's getting a discussion started. And on one side, you've got they're calling me a racist. Yes. And on the other side, you've got oh my gosh, we are racist. I am so guilty because we are racist. You see what I'm saying? But I think it's somewhere in the middle. For me, it's a discussion starter. Why is that? Um. Well, it's a discussion starter because you're intelligent and you like to have good conversations no i mean what i think is why is that why are why is the percentage 35 percent and um the how would you say the population population is 3.4 percent that's the number of black people that live in iowa and 35 percent of those in, involved in violent crimes in prison uh are um, um, 1190 or 35 percent are black okay so wh- well, wh- why, it, Chris, do you know, you understand why it is this way? Well, I was going to go ahead, Lisa. Well, for me, I, you said, well, maybe it's the mandatory minimum sentence. I think that's certainly a problem, but it's really, it couldn't be the mandatory minimum. In my opinion, I, I, I don't, I discard that because if it's mandatory minimum, it's mandatory minimum for everybody. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. It is. Yes. Yes. It's not, it's not mandatory minimum just for black people. It's mandatory minimum for all people who live in the state of Iowa. But then again, maybe, of course, they're talking all people that are in prison, not just people who have a mandatory minimum sentence. Correct. So then I think, okay, why did he make that poor choice? Or why did who this gentleman or this lady or whoever in prison make that poor choice? And why is it a bigger, why is it a bigger, you know, percentage than the actual population percentage? All right, and Lisa. And I start, I do, I do research on that, I guess. It just... You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now I, I got to hold. I got to go up against a break. Do you want to hold on, or have you made your point? No, that's okay. I just wanted to say that for me, it's just a conversation starter. I don't really think they're trying to make me feel guilty or anything. I think they're just trying to say what what's up with that. All right, Lisa. I very much appreciate you calling, Chris. We'll come back to you and the other callers when we come back from this break. Live here on ninety nine point three, the truth. Northern Lights Pizza's amazing garlic butter makes amazing breadsticks. Now available in 12-ounce bottles at Northern Lights, Hy-Vee, and Graziano's. Northern Lights Pizza. I'm Brian Leach, owner of Service Legends, and my position is Chief Talent Officer. I'm Nicholas Wondershad. I am Bernie Hobbs. And I'm the Service Manager. Marketing Director and Client Relations Manager. Everything that we do is about ensuring that we exceed your expectations. Our clients are important to us, 100% satisfaction. We're not just focused on heating and cooling. That's the easiest part of our job, actually, is fixing furnaces and air conditioners. Everyone that we come in touch with, we want to improve lives. Bottom line is, we've got our installation guarantees, 25% energy savings guarantee, comfort guarantee, temperature selection guarantee, property protection guarantee. 100% satisfaction guaranteed, fixed rate or it's free. All of those guarantees are backed up with a 100% money back guarantee to hold ourselves accountable to making sure that you get what you're after. Just fix them the problem today. If they have another problem five days down the road, 
it's still fixed right or it's free. We use what's called straightforward pricing. Our technicians are going to give you an exact to the penny price on what it's going to take before they move forward with any repair. That way you know what to expect. It's the same price every day. No surprises. If you get off work at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, you come home, you realize that, oh, my furnace is broken. Now you need to call somebody out that night. You shouldn't have to pay more for that. We're guaranteeing service 24-7. We run afternoons, evenings, nights, weekends. We're staffed to work that. Phone rings at 3 in the morning. You'll get one of our representatives answering the phone every time. We're not sending you out to Timbuktu in some call center. It's our service legend team members, our mission control team. I'll take a call anytime. And then they answer the phones the same way during the day as they do at night. It's a great day at your service company. How can we make you smile? That's the only way to provide true 24-hour service. When you're able to let somebody actually live in their home safely when they weren't able to do that before, where they don't have to stay up at night and worry about is the heat going to come back on? Are we going to freeze the pipes? Is the baby in the room next door going to be sick because they got too cold? When you're able to help somebody overcome challenges like that, that's impacting a lot. That makes a difference. I get goosebumps thinking about it. I love the team. I love the people that I work with. <laughs> we have fun, but we work hard. I call them my ambassadors of legendary service. If you could just envision what that is, that's who we're sending to your home. They literally will call in, pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I want to talk to your manager. And I get on the phone, they're like, that technician that was at my house was the greatest technician ever. That's cool to me. We want to brighten people's days. Every person that we have going into the house has gone through an extensive background check. Drug testing, we have a very thorough interview process that one out of 140 people make it through. If we promise you something, that's what you're going to get, no matter what. We're here when you need us to protect the safety and comfort of your family. If you're not happy, we're gonna make it right. If we're willing to put 100% money back guarantee on what we do, what type of work do you think we do? Give us a call. We're there for you 24-7, 365 days a year. Enough said. Yay. 22 minutes before the top of the hour. Jeb, you're doing fine. Don't worry about it. You're doing fine. We've got good smelling Chris in there with you, so that's good. All right, we are uh, talking about, um, I don't know what we're talking about. I, I know what I'm talking about, but L Lisa kind of made me think I'm, maybe I'm not talking about the right thing. You know, I like Lisa. She, she, she kind of clears the manure aside and says, well, what are we really talking about here? And what we're really talking about is, I think... I would say it's the manipulation of the media to try to, to make people who only accept headlines and maybe the first couple paragraphs to, to be manipulated in a certain way. I think to some degree, uh, Mac, and I, I would agree, I appreciate Lisa's call. It gets uh, all of us to think this is Chris here. Uh, but I think one of the things that is underlying this whole discussion that might be in the minds of those who uh, have written this or agree with the sentiment, and that is that with a... Um, seven-year minimum sentence for things like robbery, um, first and second degree robbery, okay, so this isn't, you know, stick of gum necessarily. This is a little bit bigger than that, robbery. But those kinds of crimes are more common in economically or socially kind of repressed areas, if that's the right way to, sure. to put it, right? If you don't have a lot of things and you're, you're struggling to make ends meet, you're more liable, you're more probable, I should say, uh, to steal, to do things, to fight real hard to get, a, to, get, uh, to get what you want in life. And so with a minimum sentencing thing like this, that kind of crime is happening amongst those communities. Those communities in Iowa, especially in Des Moines, have a lot of black folks in those communities. It's just the... The way the demographics fall, I didn't create that, but that's just the way that falls. And so uh, black folks are getting imprisoned more, and then they stay in there for a long period of time, which then on the on the paper makes it look a little unbalanced. I think that's where they're coming from. All right, 515-244-0077. Let's go to Phil. Phil, you're live in Max World. How you doing, Phil? Good, all right. How you doing? Good, good. So what's your thoughts on this? Well, the studies that have shown, these have shown that Blacks are uh, given more convictions and har harsher charges than whites. Uh, long socioeconomic lines and all the, and any other kind of, all things being equal. And there's been enough studies on this, so that's pretty much just a given. And then with the, uh, the <clears throat> register headline of blacks are overrepresented by a factor of 10 of population, 
And the issue is, you feel bad because of that. I mean, what kind of headline do you want them to have with that, with those numbers? I mean, all right. So, so I'm trying to understand what you're saying here. Um, you're kind of disagreeing with me, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, no, that's okay. I love. I'm. If two people always agree, one of them isn't necessary, and unfortunately, that makes me not necessary. So, but so what you're saying is that the newspaper or the media has the right to show this disparaging uh, uh, way, uh, this disparaging information, because why? Well, we agree on the fact that blacks are overrepresented in Iowa prisons by a factor of 10, right? Right. 30% prisons, 2% of them. Yeah, 35% of, of the inmates in prison are okay. black, and they only represent 3.4% of the population. Okay, that is a flat-out fact. Those are numbers. What do you want to go from there? Blacks are overrepresented by a factor of 10, and they haven't come in. Blacks are represented by a factor of 10, and good. I mean, what... What do you want to say with that? That's those are the numbers, and it looks bad because it kind of is. Okay, so but, I think you and I agree. Well, but here, um, Phil, here would be my comment to you. Um, and Mac made this. Maybe he made this comment in the first hour. But people who commit crimes go to jail, right? Um, and so, yes, the 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 data shows that there are more black folks in prison. In other words, the population is a factor of 10, you know, more in prison than it is uh, outside of prison, as it were. Yes, that's 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 a fact. Um, but that has it really isn't a race related issue. OK, well, give, give me the title you want to go with this. You think there are just uh, that blacks are over represented by a factor of 10. And it's really not a race issue. That's that's the title you think is. No, the, the title, the title should be what the article is actually about, because the article is actually about uh, the minimum sentencing standard. That's what the article is actually about. But the but the way it's it's framed is that it's about race. Of course. Right. But the actual article goes into depth about the minimum sentencing. So the article should be more about the minimum sentencing and less about uh, the race itself, right? Yeah, because mi minimum sentencing impacts anybody of any color. It's based on the crime, not the color. Mm -hmm. Well, minimum, yeah, I think minimum sentences are definitely a bad thing. I mean, I don't think they they represent uh, issues that are necessary to get a just sentence. But that's not where you're going with with uh, with radio show here. You specifically said that you think that the register is calling you racist, and you feel bad or something. Yeah, I think I think I think the rate I think the the media, the Des Moines Register in this case, is trying to point out that we treat back black people unfairly, that we treat black people and white people differently when it comes to the criminal justice system, and I just think that's bunk. I think well, that's absurd. Now I know it was that way fifty, sixty, seventy years ago. I have no doubt. Maybe it was that way forty years ago, but it's not that way today. Well, yeah, that. There's been numerous studies that show that, yeah, it, it kind of is. So, I mean, I don't want to tell you with that. There's that blacks are charged more for the same crime, higher conviction rate for the same crime. And, I mean, you can go this way or that way with that. I don't know. That, that's perhaps a completely different discussion. But, but if, if black people do, if black people do a third of the, um, uh, of the crime then a third of the people in prison are going to be black, right? Yeah. Do you, do, did I lose you? Did, what am I doing wrong here? Well, I, here's the situation. I, uh, Phil, are you there? Yeah, here's the situation. Okay. The population is over, blacks are overrepresented by a factor of 10. And yes. you think that is an attack on you? I think I mean, that I what think. What story the, do you want to go with that? Where do you want to go with that? Blacks are represented, over, overrepresented by a factor of ten, and Mac is okay. I mean, I, yeah, Phil. I think I. I think I get you. Yeah, Phil. I think I'm. I think I get where you're coming from. Oh, Mac really? is making this too personal, right? Mac is taking this true statistic, the real data, and Mac is making it about himself, right? That's kind of where you're coming yeah. from. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. He's over personalizing this. The the who me? Yeah. 
I think maybe that's where Phil's coming from, that he's saying <laughs> that this really, the Des Moines Register isn't calling Mac a racist. The Des Moines Register is being racist by the way they're reporting the information, I think. I, no, I don't agree with that one either. Oh, I'm sorry. That last bit was, that last bit was mine, Phil. I'll, I'll take all the credit uh, for that. <laughs> Phil, I appreciate you. How you. are you guys feeling bad about this? I mean, either one of you. Okay, the register is being racist to you is the reasonable one, apparently, now. And the other one's telling me, yeah, blacks over is meant by 10, and they didn't say, Mac, you're okay at the end. Of <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys talking about? Well, Phil, I appreciate you calling in. <laughs> You, pl- please call in again. Yeah, well, and, and you can always disagree with me. That'd be fine. All right. All right, buddy. Bye bye. I like I liked Phil. I did too. I did too. I wish I wish his I wish Maybe the reception was a little bit better so I could hear him clearer, but I liked him. All right, let's go uh, real quickly before we go to break. Let's go to Anita. Anita, you're live in Max World. How you doing, Anita? Hey, I'm fine. How are you? Good, good, good. So what do you say That's here? Clear. Well, I want, I'm going to weigh in on a couple things. One, the program um, the program in general uh, on this on this channel, the, cha- the programs are beautiful, especially the sermons that are and the teachings that go on. However, I think some of the ministers have made it plain that they have sort of a, in my opinion, a racist view of of, of black people. I, I do. I, I'm, I'm just being truthful. That's, That's all right. I want you to be truthful. Second of all, we you have just as many white youth that get in trouble the same kind of way that black ones do. But here's the pro, here's the all right, difference. All right, Anita, hold Your on. Anita, have... Anita, Anita, hold on right there, okay? I've got a hard break. We'll be gone for two minutes, and then you're the first caller I take when we come back because I want to hear what you have to say, okay? All right. Hang on for two minutes. We're coming back live to Max World on 99.3 The Truth. Anita's first up. Frank, Frank hung up. From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Rockton Prevention is celebrating 25 years of creating a caring community. We want to say thank you to the tens of thousands of Rock High School mentors that have carried our message of health, love, and encouragement to over 1.5 million children, teachers, and parents. Our mentors teach children methods and skills to prevent bullying and drug use. Thank you to all the school administrators, teachers, and counselors for the opportunity to serve you. Rock on, fair citizens. Rock on. This is Pat McManus for Rock and Prevention, the Richard O. Jacobson Foundation, and this station. Northern Lights Pizza, your home of the tasty crust. Our garlic butter sauce now available in 12-ounce bottles at Northern Lights, hy and Graziano. Northern Lights Pizza. Hi, my name is David Burrier, your Hope Coach. I host a live weekly talk show called I've Been There every Thursday afternoon at 5.30, right here on webcast1live.com and on my weekly radio program Saturday mornings at 10 on Truth Network 99.3 FM. I interview common, everyday people who have survived incredible life challenges and who testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of their storms. So join me as we bring a message of hope and encouragement. Everybody needs hope. I know, because I've been there. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. All right, three fi- or four fifty, ten before the top. I want to go right to Anita because Anita was trying to make a point. Her first point was that she enjoys the radio station, that she likes the uh, uh, some of the preachers. She thinks some of the preachers may take kind of a racist bend. Am I getting that right so far, Anita? An- Did I get that right so far, Anita? Yes. Okay, now go ahead with your second thought. Now, my second thought was the, we have white youth in the morning that get into just as much of this kind of trouble as uh, black youth do and end up in jail or prison. 
And uh, the, the the difference is, is uh, I have a son that's had some of these troubles. He's, he's out and doing well now. But here's the difference. I've been in all kinds of courtrooms with him and, and talked to Polk County attorneys and everything. And we did not have the finances to go get a, a big name attorney here in town to fight the drug charges. The charges, the, what they charge you for their services is, is way out of most of the African American people's pockets here in Des Moines. So consequently, they have to make a deal with the attorney, with the Polk County attorney. When you make a deal with the Polk County attorney, it's never going to be in your favor. Okay, so you take these sentences, these young men, they take them and take them and take them. They take the deal, and pretty soon, praise, honor, and glory to God, my son has never done over six months in prison one time. But uh, other times he has had jail time, but it's been on some real shaky charges. But I didn't have the home to put up. I didn't have the money to, to call the big shot attorneys to represent him. And so they get caught in this. Now, there are there are young black men who deal in drugs. You just seen something about that in the newspaper. I, I mean, that that happens. But not the, like you somebody said there that they get these long sentences and they do. And they get they're still getting long sentences for marijuana and they can and they can go to Colorado and, and smoke it all they want to. Now, I don't think that that's a problem for me. If it's somewhere that you can have it in this country and not go to prison, but there's other places in this country where you can have it and you do go to prison. Makes no sense to me. Yeah, yeah. So I... that's basically what I, I had to say. Now, as for you, uh, I, 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 I can hear it in your voice. This kind of thing bothers you. But the thing of it is, is uh, you made comments that bothered me. Well, that's just what you get. You know, it's 50-50 on that. But I think uh, I might have to visit your church because I like to hear you speak on the Lord because you can't really love God and, and dislike people. Any color. ISIS, ISIL, whatever you want to call them. He created all of us. Do you, do you hear me saying I dislike people? No, I know I don't hear. I hear it in your attitude. I don't. I've ne- you never said it on the radio. Oh, you're assuming. No, I'm not assuming. Okay. Otherwise, otherwise, why would you have this this question, this big question about what the register said? Be, you, got, be, you got somebody there. I heard him in the background. I don't know who thinks you personalize this, and and you do. You get this stuff personalized, and then you you have the opportunity to spew it on the radio. I don't. All I can do is call in and hope I get in that day. Some days I don't. Well, well Anita, that's just my opinion. I get to have that, don't I? Amen. All right, Anita, thank you very much for calling. Your voice is always welcome here in Max World, all right? Thank you. Have you a bet. Day. Thank you very much. God bless. All right, let's uh, take. I one. like Anita, Mac. Let's take one more caller. It's Frank. Uh, it's the Frank. Uh, Frank, yes. What, what would you like to add now that you've taken the day off but still would like to get on the radio? Hello, Frank. Oh, that's a bummer. Hey, I really liked Anita. Man, that was that was a really great call. I think that if you really are paying attention to what Anita said, she said very clearly, very succinctly, succinctly with a lot of really great points, something that I wish I was smart enough to say. She did a really good job of pointing out the challenge that face uh, black youth in Des Moines. She she very clearly articulated a very smart, I mean, succinctly, I wish I could have said that really well. I just don't have the experiences she's had, and I think she's right. Those are things we have to take uh, into account. I mean, she has uh, said that, uh, you know, lawyer fees and things like that, you know, if you have a really good lawyer, you can get away with all kinds of terrible stuff. But if you don't have a good lawyer, well... Things don't always go your way. Well, then you have to go to a public defender. That's yeah. what you know, ends up with. You get a public defender, and some public defenders... Uh, I don't know. Maybe sometimes they're phoning it in. Well, overworked and, yeah, you know, because there are a lot of cases. All right, then. We have a, one more caller holding. My guess is it's Frank again. Is it Frank again? Do you have Frank, are you there? Yes. Am I, can you hear me? I can hear you fine. Just go ahead. Okay. What Anita was saying, that the color of justice is not black or white. The color of justice is green. Uh, 13... 
3.5% of the population is black, and they're committing a disproportionate amount of the crime nationwide. And I don't know if any of you guys ever seen the movie Liar, Liar with Jim Carrey, but uh, there was a quip in there that he said basically, quick Robin Quick Trips, a word. So, I mean, just quit committing the crimes. Obviously, black people are in prison because they're committing crime. All right, Frank. I'll let you talk to Anita. I appreciate that. We'll see you tomorrow. It just seems so simple to me. It just seems so simple. If you do the crime, you do the time. And if there are more tall people who are going to prison because they commit the crime, we aren't picking on tall people. And I don't think the color of justice is green. There are public defenders. In this country, you have the right to an attorney, whether you can afford one or not. I think that's in the Miranda rights. And John Sarcone, our Polk County, uh, uh, Polk County attorney. attorney, hires the best public defenders he can get. That's it. Why is it anything more than that? Well, we sure appreciate you listening today, and thank you very much for participating. It's nice when we have uh, so many people call in and uh, uh, disagree and agree, and it's, uh, it's what we do in talk radio. We have people who uh, disagree, and they need a safe environment in which to call in and state that disagreement, and you will always have that here on this radio station called The Truth. We're not anything but the truth. I mean, we didn't call this um, The Torch or Wow or The Big Talker or anything like that. We called it The Truth because that's what we want. And your truth might be different than my truth. And your truth is as welcome as mine. I'm J. Michael McCoy. If I haven't told you lately, thanks for listening. Love this job. Couldn't do it without you. Now remember, tonight when you go home, you're carrying a grudge against somebody. You've got a resentment against somebody. And they're living rent-free between your ears. Tonight, give that name to God, the Lord Almighty. Forgive them. Because remember, the good book says, in Matthew, in fact, I think, as you forgive... You shall be forgiven. I'll see you in church.